Hey guys, this is the Serial One Mosh City. I'm really excited to go over this bike. I've heard all about Serial One, and I'm actually here with Regan, who's a Northwest Territory manager. He's telling me a little bit about the company history. What's going on with Serial One name? Well, the Serial One name came from Harley Davidson Serial Model Number One, uh, which was their first motorcycle that they produced, and I think around 1906. Wow. But that bike was uh, was truly a bike with an engine on it. Yeah, it's like a moped or something. Correct. Right, okay. So it's got that cool sort of history, and I guess it was connected to Harley Davidson when it first started, but now it's spun off. It's kind of its own thing. They're yeah, we're, we're on our own thing. Of course, we report to Harley Davidson with anything that has a logo on it, so they are still part of this brand. Yeah, well, you've done a really good job. I mean, I'm a, I'm a bicycle guy myself, but I've got friends that love Harley and have motorcycles. To be honest with you, when I first saw this thing, I was like, well, it looks clean. It, it looks pretty, pretty polished and refined. And the fact that they have multiple different models. So this is the Mosh City. And then you've also got like the Rush City over there. Speed That's the Speed Edition. So it's like a class three and and they have a step through on that they've even got some mountain bikes coming out so just you know they're they're have four frame sizes in this bike and two color combinations we're looking at like the matte black it's got some blue and gloss black accents but they also have like a a blue one that's kind of a glossy so getting into some of the components and stuff on this bike i love the bigger tires because as you can see this is like a rigid frame we got a rigid fork here it's all aluminum alloy very nicely done hydro formed and they've got these extra support bars and gussets and stuff so it feels very sturdy and then to have these higher volume tires these are 27.5 by 2.8 they are plus size that increases the air volume which just gives you a little bit more comfort dampens some vibration it also gives you a bigger contact patch and some stability and it lowers the attack angle so when you're going over cracks or maybe this dock it's just going to span those cracks a little bit easier and feel more comfortable depending on uh, the time frame that you get this bike it, it might have these kenda quick seven tires or it would have the swabby supermoto x but they're still the same size 27.5 by 2.8 i was looking at the the hub spacing here this is actually boost so 110 millimeters up front 148 millimeters in the back a little bit wider so it gives those spokes a sturdier bracing angle and i love to see that through axles as well so 12 millimeter in the rear 15 millimeter up front i'm used to seeing that on like mountain bikes and stuff it's nice to see it on a bike like this to me this is like a it's like a big kids bmx bike and you'll notice that the battery weight is right down here it's not like a lot of other bikes where there's a pack that's kind of bolted onto the seat tube or the top tube it's actually sunk down into the lower portion of that down tube and kind of the bottom bracket area it is a little bit chunky visually but it is going to improve handling and stability and from what i've experienced just riding it around it's it's actually feeling really good and, and i appreciate that I, initially i was like oh is this going to have kind of lower clearance or something but i don't think that's the case visually you can see that the chain stay is a bit higher and they've done that in such a way where you don't have to have a brake in the frame but you can still use a belt drive so a lot of other bikes you'll see a brake or something like that and that can compromise the strength of the frame a little bit it adds to the the cost but they didn't go that direction this is a single speed drivetrain so 22 teeth on that rear cog back here 50 tooth on the chain ring or belt ring with a nice plastic guard and it's pretty tight clearance so i feel like even if this wasn't the center track design which is just never goes off track it's just tight it's not like you're going to drop the chain or something like that and then that guard is going to protect your pants or your skirt if you're riding around from getting uh, touching the belt and these belts just tend to be so quiet and clean they're more reliable than chains as well so this is something i i'm seeing more and more on um, electric bikes Crank arms, 170 millimeters long. Praxis, so that's a name brand part right there. Welgo aluminum alloy platform pedals. I'm a big fan of these. These are kind of BMX style, which comes back to some of the, the styling on this. Tapered head tube, inch and an eighth to inch and a half. And we've got that nice illuminated badge that we'll get into uh, a little bit later when we come back to some of this. One thing that I did not see on the bike is uh, bottle cage bosses. I was looking around like, where would you mount a bottle cage? I think they've, they just didn't include them because you've got that nice, slanted top tube which gives you a lower standover height it's like 28 and a half inches right there a little bit taller seat tube that's going to give you some improved strength and potentially higher saddle height there's a lot of adjustability and i think the way they've set this up with the different four different frame sizes is that it, it, it seems like many of the components are sized 
correctly. So it's sort of stepped up geometry. Well, the tires are gonna give you some comfort, but you could also swap this 27.2 diameter seat post with a suspension seat post. It's something I do frequently with my own bikes, but keep in mind, it is gonna raise your minimum saddle height by a few inches. I think the stock minimum saddle height's about 31 uh, inches here. Uh, I love the kickstand actually. This has adjustable length and it's tool free. So I was setting this thing up, trying to get it ready for the photos and stuff. And it's just a lot easier to work with. You can pedal backwards without getting pedal lock if you're backing this out of a garage. There's a little bit of friction in the, the bottom bracket spindle, but not a lot. So, you know, if you slip off of this thing, just keep your eye out because sometimes it can come around and whack your shin. And that's, that's a comment on the Broza S Mag motor, more so than what Serial One has done here. Let's talk a little bit about the brakes we have trp levers these are three finger adjustable reach which is great so you can kind of bring them in a little bit if you have smaller hands you get the smaller frame size so i flip the bike around you can see this is just a huge rotor 203 millimeters you get a better mechanical advantage which is nice given slightly heavy heavier tires 46.6 pounds for the bike as you see here this is the medium sized frame and as you stop you're just going to get a little bit more efficiency on cooling as well so 203 front and rear i mean i'm used to seeing that on like a downhill bike as we get to the center the battery pack is 6.2 pounds and the motor is 6.56 pounds again the weight is really low and centered and you have two different batteries so what's the the stock battery that comes with this model the mosh city the stock battery is a 529 watt hour battery mm -hmm. um uh, our class 3 model does come with a 706 watt hour battery okay um that will be available for aftermarket and upgrading this bike if someone feels the need to do it after October get a little bit more year. range yep. okay okay and let's just check that out there is visually it's a little bit larger you can see that the pack kind of sticks up not too bad though I, I like the way that you guys designed that um, and then you're saying that they're cross compatible so these batteries would work with either they're model. all modular they can go back and forth you can see here that they've got the locking cylinder and the charge port located pretty low on the frame. This is something I see pretty frequently. They might be here or around here. In some ways, I see that as a liability because it's right there where the crank arm is. And if it's plugged in, I actually think the plug is angled, so it might not snag, but it's still just kind of low. And I was wondering about dust and water. So this is the charger, it weighs 1.9 pounds. It's 42 volt, four amp. So most e-bike chargers I see are two amp. That's great. This is going to fill the bike a lot faster. Got a proprietary interface there. But apparently everything on the bike is IP65 rated, all the electronics and stuff. They said it might be tested up to IP67. So they do care about water and dust. And they do have this nice rubberized cover. But when you're down here plugging this thing in, just you know, try not to hit your head on the handlebar. And it's just a little bit of extra flexibility to get down here. You can charge the battery off the bike. And the good thing about that is you can bring the battery into a cool, dry location. If it's in extreme heat for prolonged periods of time, you're gonna degrade the, the kind of how long the battery will live, like how many full cycles you get. And if it's extremely cold and the battery's kind of chilling, you're gonna significantly impact your range. As we get up to the cockpit, I just wanna compliment the saddle here. This was pretty comfortable. I didn't see any branding on the bottom, but it does have like a little handle underneath. So in terms of picking up the bike and moving it around, that's just a little attention to detail, but it made a pretty big difference to me. We've got a flat stem, kind of cool, looking proprietary you might notice there aren't any cables showing on this bike it's just extremely visible i guess there are some cables back here but most of it is internally routed and it just looks so so clean in some ways that makes this handlebar a bit more proprietary it feels comfortable to me and i notice it's not super wide so maybe if you're going in and out of a doorway or through traffic it's not gonna stick out as much as a mountain bike or something like that to activate the bike, just hold the power button on top of this little Broza button pad here. It's an LED and it has a light sensor built in, which is pretty cool. So the lights can activate automatically, but otherwise the first button is a light. So hold the light for a couple seconds and then just comes to life. Let's see here. Oh, you don't have to hold it, you just tap it. So this is the, the head tube badge, just kind of a running light that's always on. And then there's the headlight, it's aimable, 900 lumens, and it has an aluminum alloy housing. Very good, it's up high right where you want it. It's not getting blocked by a fender, it's not vibrating or anything. That is fantastic. And then these rear lights are really something special. They each have two LEDs. And when you stop, there's an accelerometer built in, so they, they activate like a brake light which is pretty insane. Most of the time you'd have to have like a, 
the motor inhibitor switch in both of the brake levers, which adds a lot of clutter and just extra complexity and stuff. So to have accelerometers in the lights, I've never seen that before. They are fairly low. It'd be nice if maybe they were up higher, but of course you could get a helmet like I've got with a little light built in or put one on your backpack. This is way better than nothing. And sometimes I'll see lights here at the seat post or on the saddle, and then those can get blocked if you're wearing a long jacket. So, you know, it's like, well, what do you do? I, I think this is a pretty fantastic solution. It's the same thing over here on the Rush City, and you can see where their proprietary rack mounts just above it. So the rack doesn't block it or anything. I like the rack has like bungee loops and a platform up top. You could put panniers on it. And then these nice plastic fenders, really sturdy. Apparently you could get some of those accessories for this bike eventually too. You can see the mounting point there on the fork and the same mounting points here on the back. So back up here to the display, this circle button, I don't think that really does anything. Maybe that's if you had like a LCD or some other um, interface from Broza. There's plus and minus, which changes assist. And then walk mode, I wanna show you walk mode real quick. So, you know, you, you press that little button down there until this blue light starts going and then you hold minus and the bike will push itself along. Again, for a 46 pound bike without a rack or anything, I'd, I think I'd just push the bike, but it's cool that that feature is there. And then we have these four different levels of assist. And as you press plus or minus, this little green LED will turn blue and it's gonna temporarily give you some feedback on what level of assist you're on. So you can go completely off and just run this as a bike with lights. You can go up to the lowest, two, three, four, and then that's it. So four levels of assist, not too bad. Uh, after you let go for a second, it turns green again and that's giving you feedback on the battery charge level. Okay, so there are 20% increments on this. You'll notice there are four levels of assist, but five white bars giving you feedback about how full the battery is. Not as precise as 10% increments or a full percentage readout. Uh, and down here, you'll see another little LED charge level indicator with just four bars, 25% increments, but that's where we get to the app. And that's one of the big differences between the 2021 version and the 2022. So I'm, I'm kind of trying to cover both and give you some feedback. If you were at a store and you were trying to buy this bike and you wanted to tell the difference, the 2022 or the newer version is gonna have a little USB-C charge port right at the stem. You can see it down here. So you can kind of plug into this. There we go, right? That's pretty cool. So you could run the app. So I wanted to show you the app and we're back here with Regan. He's pulled it up on his phone. This works for iOS or Android. And you can see here that it's pinpointing location on the map. You can type in another location. It gives you turn by turn directions. It looks like it connects via Bluetooth and you've got a lot more detail here. We've got available range, so 6.8 miles based on the current battery charge level of 60%. I love that it's percentage instead of just like a, a bar or some infographic. And there are a bunch of other readouts here. So you can see recent rides, you could see the bike itself and then kind of brings you back to some of the details about the bike and some of the, the rides you've done. You've got privacy mode, uh, dashboard auto display, the serial number, so many things. And then this, this data plan. So the data plan relates to tracking the bike and the security and some of those other features. So if we go back home and we say lock the bike, well, it can lock this bike. And as it starts to move, it would alert you. And then you can say, okay, flash the lights and disable it. So the bike can't actually be ridden anymore with electric assist. I suppose it could be dragged off, but you would know where it's going too. And since the, the SIM card is built into the bike, I, that's a pretty cool security feature. In this last menu here, we can adjust units and get some support for our bike. The Broza motor, it's rated 250 to 750 watts, 90 newton meters of torque. And it is lightweight because it has that magnesium housing, but it's measuring pedal cadence and pedal torque up here. And in the back, it's measuring rear wheel speed. And the magnet is right there. It's bolted onto the outside of that disc brake rotor. So a lot of times you'll see like a little spoke magnet and then some external sensor that can get dirty and bumped easier. This is much more refined, a lot like the fancier mountain bikes. Yeah, I get, again, at a high level, this single speed design, it's kind of fun, it's tough, it's lightweight, and using the, the coolest, newest technology in a lot of ways. I'm just gonna hop on this thing and go for a little ride. It's been pretty quiet, which I appreciate, and also really zippy. The Brosa motor is used by many other leading e-bike companies, um, including like Specialized, they use that on some of their bikes. 
And I think inside it uses a Gates carbon belt drive too, which creates that sort of smooth feeling. Okay, so we're starting out, I'm in the highest level of assist. I'm gonna pedal along. The first couple strokes take a little bit more leg effort, if, especially if you're in a lower level of assist, but then it gets going and it's really smooth. And especially if you take it into that high level, not too bad. Very stable because of those high volume tires. As I'm riding around on this bike, um, you know, one of the trade-offs that I'm encountering is, is just, you know, it's clean, clean cockpit. There are no shifters or anything because it's a single speed. There's no LCD display. Sometimes it's hard to tell like what level of assist you're in because these, uh, these lights are just, they're small and if it's bright, you can't really see it. There isn't like a some sort of tactile feedback other than the click. There, there's no beep that lets you know that you're in the highest level. So I find myself just kind of pressing it a bunch of times and then assuming I'm in the highest and then backing it off. And I guess that's a trade-off for something that's really minimal and clean. Even though the bike looks sporty and kind of aggressive with that you know, zero degree rise stem, it feels pretty upright to me. I'm glad they used a low rise bar and that it's kind of narrow. I think I could find myself working with either the medium or the large. I'm 5'9", weigh about 135 pounds. Okay, Regan's on the Mosh City. Go for it, man. Yeah, feeling very comfortable. Oh, look at the lights. I love that. Yeah. <laughs> it did it even when you stopped just gently. Beautiful. Well guys, we had our fun. That is the Mosh City Serial One. It's one of their first electric bikes and this is the medium. Had a lot of fun on this. I've recorded all the details. I studied all the specs uh, with Regan's help. Back at electricbikereview.com, I've got a comparison tool. So you could look at some of the other models and just some other bikes that kind of capture that city sort of cruiser look and, and similar price point. I'm actually really impressed with the price point considering how proprietary everything is on this bike. There's a forum there as well. So you can chat with people who might own this bike. Um, it sounds like you're not able to add that SIM card and, and upgrade the 2021 version of this bike. So if you care about using the app and you want that little USB charging port, double check that. Uh, they sell these at the Harley uh, dealerships in, in some cases, and they also sell direct. So their YouTube channel has a really cool unboxing video, and you can just tell there's so much attention to detail, both the logo on the box and the way that it's packaged and everything. I'm really impressed. I love you guys, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.